Hey guys, what is going on? My name's Tyler McNabb. This is my YFZ 450R, and that is my 400EX. So, a little bit of a different video today. I uh, don't really have much planned going on right now um, because unfortunately, um, today is currently a Monday. It's, the, it's July 3rd, the day before 4th of July. Luckily, uh, I don't have to work today. Um, but this last weekend was supposed to be round six. I think it's round six of the Extreme XC series um at insanity at the sanatorium unfortunately it got postponed due to a ton of rain if you're from around the indiana area or even just in the general midwest you know we got some serious storms over the last uh three or four days and we were without power for about 36 hours about a day and a half is what we were without power for but there's still people around here that still don't have power so um, we were very lucky and blessed to get power back but it was a little bit of a rough go because we actually lost power Thursday night and we didn't get it back till like very early Saturday morning when we were going to head to the race. And so we didn't end up even going to camp at the race because we couldn't get anything ready without power and all that stuff. And so it actually worked out better for us that they just postponed it. Uh, it'll be next weekend. So you guys will see that race, uh, race vlog and race video here uh, probably in a couple days after this video comes out. Um, but yeah. So, yeah, I figured uh, I don't really have much going on, so I figured I'd do a little bit of a kind of garage update video, as well as I've got some uh, updates to my Vapor Blaster right back here that I want to talk to you about. So, first things first, we got the old YFZ 450R. Nothing really new about it. Um, it's uh, race prepped and ready to go, and so it's basically just going to sit here for a week and uh, wait to get raced again. So, other than that, she is uh, good to go come over here to the old poor 400 she's not looking so hot right now as you can see so unfortunately what happened is this thing sat for like three weeks where i hadn't ridden it and i went out to ride it the other day and i grabbed the handlebars to turn it and the steering was like locked up i couldn't move it well long story short i thought maybe the um stabilizer was locked up or something maybe it was a bad tie rod something like that turns out it was the steering stem bearing so uh something going on with that which blows my mind because it had the original oem steering stem bearing in it that was 20 years old before i rebuilt this thing last year and it it worked great it was fine it was wore out but i didn't have any issues with it put a new steering stem bearing in it and this last year when i totally uh from the ground up rebuilt it and everything and after a year it's like locked up kind of seized super tough to move so we're gonna have to put a new one in there so uh that is the current state of the old 400 other than that she runs she rides all that fun stuff i just currently can't steer it so i've got the bearing i need to do that i may do that in a quick video may do like a how-to video on uh replacing the steering stem bearing because i don't know if there's one out there so uh i may do that other than that 400 is good yfc is good a couple other projects i got going on you guys have probably seen this uh, machine sitting in the background not my machine working on it for a buddy putting a top end in a 400 dx this is different from the other one that was sitting in the uh background probably you guys saw maybe three four months ago um but uh, i'm very familiar with the 400 dx's so if you're around here and your 400 needs some work or something hit me up i might uh might be able to help you out so putting a top end on that guy um let's go over here in the other side of the garage real quick so if we come over here we got my dad's trx 450 uh it's chilling over here for the time being um something i never updated you guys on you may have noticed but this thing no longer has the elka front shocks on it anymore uh, we actually got stock shocks for it and before you guys freak out and say what the heck why would you do that well our original plan was to get these stock shocks and have them revalved but we just haven't had the time to get them over to Adam's suspension and get them revalved and all that stuff so right now it's just chilling on stock shocks um so we actually ended up a guy came and bought the rear elka off of this uh quad when i put the rear revalve on the back of his quad which he really likes that that uh was much much better than that rear elka and then we got these the guy that we sold the front or that we sold the rear elkas to he wanted the front elkas as well 
and just decided to trade us for uh, the stock shocks and we got a little bit of cash on top so uh, that worked out pretty good and uh, since my dad's not racing or anything at the moment uh, it works it, it's worked out really well so that thing other than that it still runs it still rides we were having some issues uh, with it starting and we figured out our front 24 volt battery went bad and so right now we've just got it hooked up as 12 volt especially since he's not racing it or anything there's no need to have 24 volt unless because the only good a 24 volt system does is it just starts quicker that's it so it doesn't give you it actually hurts you more than it helps you in reality um so went ahead unhooked that 24 volt battery we're set up on 12 volts on this thing but other than that it's uh good to go and then you guys have probably seen some of these other machines in the backgrounds of videos but i i don't think i've ever actually introduced them we do have a polaris razor 900s i believe it's a 2016 i think is the is the uh year um, we don't do much with this other than uh, we use it around the house to do a lot of uh, work and um we use it to cut wood, haul wood, because we have a wood-burning stove that we use. Um, and then, uh, other than that, we use it just to play around out in the woods. We've been wanting to go riding here shortly. I've got some buddies from work that go up to Redbird uh, State Recreation Area, which if you're from around here, you've probably heard of that. And so I think, hopefully, in the near future, we may... Uh, uh, get together with them and uh, go up and go ride at Redbird or something. I know my dad's been wanting to go back up there uh, for quite some time, so... We'll probably do that at some point. Uh, he grew up riding out there before it was ever a state riding park and all that stuff. So, um, been wanting to get back out there and that kind of stuff. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, I grew up, I rode there a little bit. But other than that, um, haven't been back there in a while. So, I may try to go back there at some point. And then we have the old trail machine. I love this thing. So, this is, it's a little dirty right now because I actually, I was just out yesterday checking out the woods after all the storms we had. This is, I believe it's a 2005 maybe? I can't remember the year. 2005 Arctic Cat 250. And the cool thing about this is, is even though it's only 250 cc's, it's actually four wheel drive, which you definitely don't see anymore. Nowadays, you can't get a four by four utility quad under like four or 500 cc's. So these older ones are super cool. We've actually had this thing for quite some time um let's see my dad bought this thing back probably oh it's probably been maybe did maybe 10 years ago maybe not quite that long but we bought this thing when we sold all of our uh, race quads originally and got out of racing and then now we are back uh we bought this thing and we just had this thing to toy around on and i beat the crap out of this thing um, because I didn't have a race quad to ride around and so this thing's been a trooper it does burn a little bit of oil but you know what old quad doesn't so other than that it runs great the four-wheel drive works and uh, it's a good fun utility quad that I can go out on the trails real easy throw the chainsaw on the back rack got my Fiskars snips and axe on the front and uh, helps me uh, clear out trails and that kind of stuff but other than that um, this thing is a trooper and I really like this thing and so yeah, that's uh, just kind of a quick garage update But now what I want to do I want to go over in the other side over here and show you the updates to the old vapor blaster so We go over here. So at first glance you guys Probably can't really tell a difference. It pretty much looks the same if you look closer. However, you will see a seam and some hinges going down through here. So originally when I bought this cabinet, the only door that opened was this top door, and then there's a side door over here, but I just basically went ahead and sealed that shut. So here we have our vapor blast cabinet, and what I wanted to be able to do was get bigger engines into it a lot easier. So I'm gonna set you up on the tripod real quick and show you something cool. So we got our new cutout door here is what we had, I went ahead I got the old grinder out. I ground nice. Tried to get it as straight as I possibly could going around here. And then other than that, it's basically the exact same. So I didn't have to modify too much. So let me show you how it opens real quick. So these are just the original latches that were on there to hold it down and it works out good. Pop that open, lean the lid back like it was originally. 
And then this guy just folds down like this and lays right there. So now I have a much bigger opening to be able to get engines in and out a lot easier. And so uh, let me take you back off the tripod and uh, I'll go into a little bit more depth on it. So we got the blasting cabinet here. And if you look right here, so what I did is I made the cut all the way around. And then what I did is I took some thin pieces of, I believe it's two inch wide and like eighth inch uh, aluminum is what that is. And I have it secured with some self tappers right there. And then I got this rubber seal here and I applied it all the way around the edge so that when you push this up and close the door, it seals up against here to prevent leaks. I did have some initial leaks at first, um, but it was mainly coming from around where the hinges were. So what I did is I came back and I had this piece about, it was about three foot left over that aluminum stock. And it definitely doesn't look pretty. So don't judge me on my metal working skills because I was just working with a vise and a crescent wrench is I put the uh, like half the metal in the vise, put the crescent wrench on top and bent it over to make a little bit of a lip. So then what happens is when you close this, that lip covers uh, where the hinges are and where the cutouts are for those seals. And so what that does then is when I'm blasting and the water and the sand is coming back, it's not going down in these crevices. Instead, it's hitting this and it's running over. So this lip sits just on top of uh, where the hinges are. So hopefully that will fix my leaks. I won't have as much stuff in there and then I won't have to worry about the seals getting as dirty as they were um, as well. So. That's uh, pretty much the update. Other than that, like I said, it's basically the same. I just went ahead, cut that out, put a backing, put the rubber strip on, and then I've been sealing in some uh, various places uh, with some silicone uh, that's had leaks. But other than that, the vapor blast cabinet is pretty much the exact same. Got the hose, got our nozzle, got our pump and uh, down here in the bucket. Other than that, uh, I cleaned out the uh, slurry and all that put some fresh media and water in there. And so I think this thing's ready to blast. So something else you might've seen in the background of a couple of my videos, I'm surprised nobody commented on it, was this guy here. So this is a engine I was gonna do for a guy. Um, it is a Honda CB750 um, motorcycle engine. So this is a four cylinder. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm really surprised nobody saw it. But anyway, I had it loaded in the cabinet yesterday but unfortunately it does fit in the cabinet and there's actually a good amount of space around it and above it. However, it is so big and heavy that I can't maneuver it inside the cabinet and still be able to um, lift the gun up and spray. There's just not quite enough room. I, I think if I had maybe another six to eight inches of depth in it, I could have probably made it work. But what I also need to get is like a turntable a lot of the nicer ones have like a turntable in here that you can set engines on and then uh, spin them around really easy um but for now what i do is i just set engines like on this slab of wood so that they slide around really easy but other than that it's uh yeah it is what it is so unfortunately i told the guy i was not able to do this engine so he's going to come pick that up um, but I'd never tried one before and I told him that and I said hey uh, I'm gonna try do the best I can to do it and but if I can't I'm sorry I, I just wanted to find out so unfortunately I can't um, but what we can do is we can stick to single cylinder engines so let's head on over to the bench over here here we have a TRX 450 ER engine all prepped up sealed up ready to go uh, into the vapor blaster. So I'm going to do that in today's video. Maybe do a little bit of time lapsing. Uh, but here's what it looks like before. As you can see, cases are kind of grimy. Um, these center cases actually look almost brand new. So I don't know if they put brand new center cases on these or what. But uh, the center cases actually look, yeah, pretty much brand new. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, we're going to get these cases and the whole engine cleaned up and uh, get them a fresh looking engine. 
so they can uh, be ready for that. So we're gonna throw that in the vapor blaster today. I'm gonna do that. And uh, yeah, just uh, I'll show you the after results too. And then one other thing I forgot I was gonna say as well, I did put some heavy duty rebar in here, coated with some nice flex seal to keep it somewhat waterproof because it just had these thin bars in here previously. And this one I had to leave because it was like welded in and I didn't really have time to grind it out. So I'm just gonna leave that one in there for now. It should be good. Most of the weight will be sitting over here, but I got some half inch rebar. So that should be plenty strong um, to hold up any of these single cylinder engines. So anyway, I will quit talking because at this point I've probably been talking for like 15 minutes and uh, that's probably not what you guys wanna see. So we will get this engine in the vapor blaster real quick and then uh, I'll show you what it looks like after the fact. So I'll see you then. Okay guys, well, we got this engine out of the vapor blaster and ooh baby, does it look good. This thing looks brand spanking new. Um, actually it looks better than new because man, the shine on this thing is absolutely sweet. So got this thing all cleaned up for the customer and uh, hopefully they're, uh, they're gonna like it because this thing looks like i said pretty much brand spanking new so uh super excited uh that i've got this vapor blast cabinet working like i do uh it's definitely not the it's definitely not your uh brand new um purchase from a manufacturer vapor blast cabinet it has its issues as you can tell we got a couple leaks um some really they're just seeps more than anything um, just some places that I'm probably gonna need to seal up with some silicone um, at some point, but overall um, If you're balling on a budget and uh, you want your own vapor blast cabinet, they're really not that hard to build so uh, If you haven't seen I'll link down below the original video I posted of what all I did um, when I built this. It's not like a how-to build series or anything, but I did uh, go through and talk about everything that I did to it and all that. So I will link that video down below if you wanna go see that. Um, but other than that, yeah, this thing is uh, functioning as it should be. So slowly getting it more and more uh, better, basically. So got that, got the engine looking all nice. So I will let the customer know that it's done and hopefully, like I said, they like it and uh, they can come pick that up uh, and be all well and good. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this little bit of a video. It wasn't anything too fancy, just a little bit of a garage update as well as some uh, vapor blasting and vapor blast cabinet update. So next video I will probably, well actually hopefully it'll be racing um, at round six of the Extreme XC Series Insanity at the Sanatorium. So hopefully we will be there, but then like I said, I might do a little bit of a video going through um, replacing the uh, steering stem bearing for that guy. But other than that, um, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this little garage update and some other various stuff. And uh, like I always say in my videos, sometimes I say it too much, maybe I repeat myself a lot, but I'm learning. Um, I really do appreciate you guys coming, watching the videos, all that stuff. And uh, like I said, it wouldn't be any fun without you guys coming and watching, interacting, liking, commenting, all that fun stuff. So thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next one.